Hey everyone, so if you've ever spent any time with a generative AI like ChatGPT, I'm sure you know the feeling. You get an answer that sounds brilliant, super confident, and then you realize it's completely, totally wrong. Today, we're going to pull back the curtain on this really weird phenomenon. Yeah, it's a super common experience, right? And it can be kind of funny, but also a little bit unsettling. You ask a pretty simple question, and the AI just confidently invents facts or dates or even whole storylines. This is what we call an AI hallucination. And in this explainer, we're going to break down exactly what it is, why it happens, and most importantly, how you can work with it safely. All right, let's dive right in. First things first, we need to get on the same page. What are we actually talking about when we say an AI is hallucinating? So at its core, it's when a model just makes stuff up. It's not a bug in the sense that the machine is seeing things. It's not having some kind of psychological break. Instead, it's just a byproduct of its main job, creating an output that sounds believable, even if it has no connection to reality. You know, this analogy just nails it. Imagine you have zero concept of math, but you know that when someone asks a question with numbers, they expect a number back. 35 sounds like a totally reasonable number, so you just say it. That is exactly what the AI is doing. It's making a really, really sophisticated statistical guess to continue a pattern, not to state a proven fact. And that brings us to the million-dollar question. Why? Why do these unbelievably powerful systems just invent things? Well, the answer is all about their fundamental goal. Okay, so this is the absolute key to understanding everything. A large language model is not trying to be correct. It's trying to be probable. Its entire job, its whole reason for being, is to predict the next word in a sequence that is most likely to create fluent, human-sounding text. It has no little person inside asking, wait a second, is this actually true? It just keeps the pattern going. Let's break that down a little more. These models are basically trained to always give you an answer. In their training, saying, I don't know, is often seen as a failure. They get rewarded for making smooth, confident guesses. So when they hit a patch where they have incomplete information, they don't stop. They just confidently fill in the blanks. And this is how you get these weird mashups, like it inventing a Harvard University London campus, just because Harvard and London are both statistically linked to prestigious universities and its vast web of data. Okay, so if this is just how these things behave, can we at least predict when it's most likely to happen? And the answer is yes, for sure. There are definite risk zones you need to be aware of. The risk really goes up with obscurity and complexity. So asking about something super niche where the training data is probably pretty thin, that's a classic trigger. Same goes for really complex requests, like asking it to combine a specialized topic with, say, a low resource language, which just means a language with less data online for it to learn from. And finally, asking an AI to perform a long chain of reasoning is basically a game of telephone. One tiny error at the start can get magnified into something completely made up by the end. All right, we're about to get to the single most important idea in this entire explainer. Seriously, this is a shift in thinking that changes everything about how you should see these tools. Is hallucination a flaw we need to fix or is it something else? Because here's the kicker. A lot of researchers argue that hallucination isn't a mistake in the code. It is an inherent structural part of how these generative models work. It's a direct result of the very thing that makes them so incredibly powerful and creative in the first place. So think about it this way. An LLM doesn't have a database of facts. What it has is this giant, tangled web of statistical patterns and associations. When you ask it a question, it just lights up the relevant patterns and blends them together into something new. Now, we humans do something kind of similar, but with one massive difference. We have a conscious layer for fact-checking and understanding context. The AI is pure pattern matching without that final reality check. And this quote just drives the point home. The model's whole objective is to generate new probable text. That means the feature of creative guessing is just baked right in. To get rid of it, you'd have to completely change its purpose from a creative generator into a boring old database. And then it wouldn't be generative AI anyone, would it? So what does this all mean in the real world? Well, the implications are huge, especially in a field like education, where more and more students are turning to AI for help with their work. And the risks here are really serious. A confident but wrong answer from an AI can cement a student's misunderstanding in a critical subject like medicine or law. It can weaken our own analytical skills by making it too easy to just take the first answer we get. 
And of course, it can lead to students accidentally putting completely fabricated sources or data into their papers. But listen, the answer isn't to ban these tools. I mean, that ship has sailed. The real solution is for all of us to build a new kind of skill, AI literacy. It's all about learning to use these amazing tools with a critical eye, understanding their incredible strengths, and just as importantly, their built-in weaknesses. Which brings us to our final, and maybe most practical, section. How can you, right now, use these tools more safely and effectively? Here's your toolkit. Okay, first, and this one is huge, change your mindset. Treat the AI as a creative brainstorming partner, not as the final expert. Second, get really specific with your prompts. Clear context and clear goals will always get you more accurate answers. Third, challenge it. Ask the model to explain its reasoning or show its work. Fourth, and this one is absolutely non-negotiable, you are the final editor. Never, ever just copy and paste without a thorough review. And finally, just be transparent. It's quickly becoming standard practice to just say when and how AI helped you with your work. I really love this closing thought. These tools are elegant, they're powerful, but they are imperfect. The key isn't waiting for them to become perfect. The key is for us to get smarter about how we use them. Really mastering the tool means understanding its flaws. So is this just how it's going to be forever? Well, not necessarily. Researchers are working around the clock on ways to at least reduce, though probably not completely eliminate, hallucinations. There are two really promising ideas on the horizon. First, new ways of training that specifically reward the AI for being factually accurate, not just for sounding good. And second, these cool hybrid systems that could give a creative AI access to a verified database of facts. This would let it be creative while still grounding its answers in reality. So while hallucinations are definitely here to stay for a while, the future of AI is likely to get more and more accurate. And our ability to use it wisely, well, that's going to be the most important skill of all. Thanks for tuning in.